The most recent update to Sea of Thieves Heart of Fire brings with it a new tall tale for us to conquer and enjoy. So in this video I'm going to break down everything you guys need to do in order to complete the tall tale, collect all the journals and complete all the commendations so you can get your hands on some awesome new rewards. And we're doing it all right now. Hey squad, Sykes here and a kindly reminder that if you enjoy this video please make sure you leave a like, head over to Installation X and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications of future uploads. Also spoiler warning as this video will include narrative and gameplay spoilers for the new Heart of Fire tool tale so you have been warned. I'm also going to do something a little different this time guys and add timestamps in the description so you can jump ahead if you wish to view the relevant part of the tutorial for you. I will leave stamps for the start, the eternal king path, the forsaken flame path, the burning heart path and finally the finale. I hope you enjoy. So first step is you need to head over to Morrow's Peak Outpost out in the Devil's Roar. Once you have landed at the outpost head up to the tavern and the journal will be on the bar next to Tallulah the barmaid. Once you have voted for the tall tale the dialogue will begin and Tallulah will tell the tale that the journal is actually Grace's who is standing outside the tavern. Grace will soon be joined by the spirit of Arthur Pendragon. Pendragon reveals that it was actually Stitcher Jim who released him from his painting in the Seabound Soul and who tricked him into releasing Flameheart. Pendragon also tells us that Jim has captured the spirits of his crew in the dark relics of a cursed chest and was planning on using them in some ritual. Grace also reveals that Jim had previously betrayed her and that she had kept a track of his whereabouts in her journal. The journal entry will direct you to head northwest up to Liar's Backbone. Once you land on Liar's Backbone, head up to the top of the hill to the west and a new block cave will appear. Pull the lever to the left and the cave will open revealing Stitcher Jim's secret lair. Once inside you will need to solve a simple puzzle. But before you worry about that, just before you head up to the wooden steps to the puzzle, the first journal will be to your left hand side up on a shelf. Now to the puzzle. And in order to complete the puzzle you need to get the symbols to read and spell out King Flameheart. If you are unsure about which symbols you need, they are scattered on the walls of the cave. If you head over to each one and read them, you will quickly figure out which symbols match which words. Once you've figured out the symbols, you need to add them into the puzzle from left to right and pull the lever to the left hand side. This will then open the small vault to reveal the key. Now that you've got the key, you need to head down south to Devils first. Now if you don't know where to go, head to the north of the island. If you head up to the top of the peak facing north, you will find a stone chalice. Light the chalice with your lantern and a series of torches will ignite, revealing the path you need to take, sending you under the water. Follow the glowing stones to a massive awesome door in the shape of Flameheart's head. Place the key in the pillar in the front of the door and it will open. Swim on in and head straight following the glowing parts of the cave floor off to the right hand side. When you come up for air, jump down into the pool and head left. When you come up for air again, head straight to the next pool, jump in and head straight on. When you come up for a third time, you will be faced with a lava pool. Jump across the lava using the rocks. Once you cross the lava jump into the final pool, head straight down again following the glowing path along the cave floor. When you come up for air a final time, you will find yourself in a large chamber with three doorways. Now each doorway is unlocked by throwing a firebomb at a corresponding skull high up on the chamber walls. If you get confused, each skull has a symbol that matches to its corresponding door. Now before you decide which path to head down, you need to go towards the middle door and you will find the second journal leaning up against the wall to the right hand side. Now this is where this tall tale is slightly different from the others in that in order to fully complete it you have to go down each individual path. This is because each path has a journal to collect, therefore to get the three remaining journals you have to go down each path. Now this isn't a big problem because by doing each of the three paths you will then complete the tall tale three times completing the full commendation. I'm going to explain each path in brief detail so you know what to be prepared for. We will start with the path to the left of the Eternal King. First up is a series of fire traps from the walls either side. Simply time each one correctly and slowly make your way through. If you catch fire, a simple munch on some food and you should be fine. Next you will encounter a closed door. With a simple tug of the pulley to the right, it will open. You'll now be in a larger area and skellies will begin to spawn. Take out the skellies while either you or a crewmate open the next door using the pulley. 
Top tip here, leave one skelly alive and distract him while a crewmate is dealing with the door, because if not, a new wave will spawn. Another set of fire traps will be waiting for you, so simply time them right and take them one by one and you'll be fine. Now you will see a fire roundabout. A bit like a revolving door, slot in between the jets of fire and simply move round with the roundabout and come out on the other side. Now the important bit is at the next phase, and this has the location of the journal for this path. Jump across the lava using the stepping stones, but before you jump off the last stone, turn left and jump across to the pile of skulls. You will see the journal to the left of the pile. Now a spike trap will follow in the water, but be careful with these as one hit will kill you. Swim on through and you will be in a larger area where skellies will spawn again. You can activate the fire trap in the middle by hitting the skull on the wall with a firebomb, but this is optional and not necessarily needed. Once through, you will be faced with a combo of fire and spike traps. Again, make sure you time these right, in particular the swinging spike traps. Finally, you will have to jump from side to side across a lava pit whilst avoiding moving jets of fire on each side. A quick jump across a final lava pit will bring you to the door leading out of the path. The path of the Eternal King is now completed. Next up is the path of the Forsaken Flame, which is the path in the centre of the chamber. First up, a few fire traps to time and dodge. When you get past these traps, you will see a door. To unlock this door, head left over the lava pool and avoiding a swinging spike trap, you will see a skull. Activate the skull with a firebomb and the door will open. A second door will appear which is opened by the pulley to the right. Skellies will spawn whilst you attempt to open a third door again using a pulley to the right. Remember to leave one skelly alive to avoid the next wave spawning. Activating the skull on the wall with a firebomb will bring a swinging spike trap into the mix so be careful with this. Now after getting through the door you can find the journal for the forsaken flame path. Head over to the skull pile in the back left corner of the area and the journal will be nicely propped up next to it. Now move through a narrow pathway with spinning wheels of fire. These may look tricky, but each wheel has a few spokes that aren't producing flames, so you want to make sure you move when these appear. Next is a floor of spike traps. These are avoidable by jumping from one wooden platform to the next. A more complicated problem involving a mast will then follow. This path is blocked by a bolted iron door and fence. To get around the door, use the pulley to lower the mast down to the ground. Make sure it's all the way down because as soon as you leave the mast will begin to rise again. A quick run along the fallen mast and a jump over the fence and you are through. Faced with another door you will need to activate the chain pulleys that move two individual cages up in the ceiling to open the door. Now a cool trap where you have to raise the capstan whilst avoiding fire pointing directly at it is next. As it's a sloop capstan if you time it right you can raise it between the jets of fire. Once you raise the capstan, a series of swinging blades will drop. This is a hard one as you have to jump across the spike pit whilst also avoiding the blade traps. With good timing, you can do it all in one movement. That then takes you to the door, out of the path, and the path of the Forsaken Flame has now been completed. Finally is the path of the Burning Heart. First up, you will have a set of spinning blade traps. A simple bit of good timing here will see you hop across safely. Next up you have wheels of fire all in tandem. If you time this right with the spokes not producing flames, you will get through with no problems. Now you will come to an interesting area. At the back of the chamber will be four spinning blade traps spinning so fast that there will be no way through. In order to get through, you will have to deactivate each trap with a different lever. The levers can be found with one directly next to the trap to the right. The second to the left next to a wooden platform the third behind the stone pillar, and the fourth and final lever is underwater just as you enter the chamber. Next is a series of slower fire wheels combined with a spike floor. You can afford to take some burn damage here as long as you are stocked up with food. Now you have a very long jump across a lava pool with a swinging blade. You will need to sword dash here in order to get across a little easier, but jumping is still an option. Next through a pulley door and into an area of skellies. Kill the skellies and unlock the door to move through. You can activate the fire traps if you want, but this isn't necessary. Now an area of fire traps which is pretty straightforward with some well-timed jumps. This will take you to a very narrow corridor with spike traps. This is the important part for the final journal. The spikes will come from the left and cover the whole corridor. There are however narrow gaps in the wall to the right to step into out of the way of the spikes. 
you need to go through to the first gap. Then time it right to go into the second gap. The journal can be found on the floor in the second gap of the right hand side wall. Using the pulley will open the final door completing the path of the burning heart. Now regardless of which path you take you will always end up in the same chamber. Head through the archway to the next area and you will see an awesome sight of Flameheart's ship, the Burning Blade. You will also see Stitcher Jim up on the other side of the cave with the chest that is imprisoning Pendragon's crew. Jim is in fact betrayed himself, this time by Flameheart. In doing so, Jim decides to flee leaving the chest behind. Hop across the stepping stones in the lava and head up to the ladders and over the wooden walkway with a quick jump across the gap to get to the chest. With the chest, head out of the caves up the path until you get to a door. Hit the skull to the left with a firebomb and the door will open. There's a few fire traps to get past but again, time it when the jets of fire stop and you will get through without any problems. You will have to open another door, this time to the left with a firebomb aimed at the skull through the waterfall. Now you will have to dodge your way through some continuous and stationary fire traps while also negotiating some turning fire traps. Time it with the space in the middle and you will be in the clear. Then a hop across through the waterfall and into an area of swinging skelly traps. These are the same as previous. Time your jumps from between the platforms and rocks but be aware as one rock also has a fire trap covering it. You will then find yourself in the final larger area with skellies but this time to open the door you will need to raise a galleon capstan. Finally, you have to negotiate a few swinging spike traps and fire traps whilst walking across a narrow beam. Now you will head back into the water and begin your swim back to the surface. Head along a narrow passageway before coming up for air. Then drop down into the final pool and you are looking for a narrow rectangular area to take you up to the surface and back to Devil's First. Now that you've done the hard bit, Pendragon will appear on the nearby shoreline. Give him the chest of rage which contains the captured soul of his crew. An awesome cinematic will begin where Pendragon uses the sword of souls to free his crew from the chest and the tale is complete. Now a couple things guys, in order to complete the tale three times you will have to go back to Morrow's Peak Outpost and vote on the voyage to start it a second and third time. You can't just go back and cycle through each of the paths as you will have to go back to get a fresh key from Stitcher Jim's lair on Liar's Backbone. Once you've completed the tall tale, you will unlock the Ashen Dragon Hole to hopefully go with the rest of your Ashen Dragon ship set. Completing the tall tale three times will, and with all the journals, unlock the Ashen Curse which is an awesome cosmetic causing the eyes, face, mouth and chest of your character to glow orange for a fantastic Ashen effect. Well squad, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did then don't forget to leave a like, head over to Installation X and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications of future uploads. Let me know your thoughts on the new tall tale in the comments below. Don't forget to follow the channel on social media, links in the description. And as always, I'm Sykes and for more on Steve Fees and all things Xbox, stay tuned to Installation X. Bye guys.